Hey data fans, Reed here. Today I'm going to walk you through how to create a range chart in Power BI using native visuals and a bit of DAX magic. So as you can see in front of us here, a range visual is something where the bar itself only highlights the actual values between the min and the max. So it has a non-zero starting point for the bar. Now this is a variation of something where you might have two values and essentially the only bar that you want to show is the comparative value between the two of them. So it's something that normally we don't have available as a standard visual in Power BI, but using a type of native visual, plus again, some formatting magic and a bit of DAX, we can actually create one using just out of the box features with a couple of measures and options. So with that being said, let's go ahead and hop into Power BI and get started. So what I have here is a visual with some dummy data that I asked ChatGPT to generate. I went ahead and had a bit of fun with it, so had some fun rules in this case. So happiness engineer, chief nap quality inspector. Either way, what it is is basically just a small table that was generated with demo data, and each of them have wage ranges. So in this case, chief nap quality inspector has a wage starting at about 30, going up to 38. So it's basically just a range between two numbers for each of these categories on the visual. So to start the conversation, I'll talk about the data that we have in front of us. I use ChatGPT to come up with some fun job title names. In this case, meme quality control analyst, professional pillow fluffer, things that are just fun either way. But these all have wage ranges for these made up titles. So 26 to 33, 28 to 35, and so on. But again, these values are starting not at zero. So this value starts at 28, this starts at 30, to 38. So you're only seeing the variance ranges and you have all that empty space leading up to that. Now the actual data itself is essentially just the average min, the average max. So happiness engineer starts at 30, goes to 40. But how do I turn this essentially into this one? And again, I'm using a native visual and only a couple measures in here. So I'm going to walk through the configurations and how we got to this point using native visuals because a client needed this in my case. And it, like a lot of my videos, it becomes a great case study. So Starting from this perspective here, um, and I already have a couple of constant lines just to show globally what is the average here. So you can see where people fall within that range. That's already been set up. That's just one of the constant lines that can be added over here under the reference line section. But from a perspective of wanting to connect these two, I thought of a few different approaches to this. So I did consider maybe using error bars and a few other stuff, but the, the things that I really liked that tied all of this together. Number one, I love the fact that I could actually turn on some ribbons. So I have some very slight ribbons colored in here to connect all of this. And also notice that the labels are on the outside for the 30 and the 40. So all of that collectively gave it a perfect design that I found. Now, the one thing that I won't mention, the only exception that I had to make is I did turn off the data labels in here. Uh, better said, not the data labels, but the tooltip labels. So if you hover, you don't get anything and you'll see why. So I'm going to start from this. And what I actually want is I don't want these two. I want the min and then I want to add the variance in there as well. So I have over here the average. So I have over here the average wage variance, which is just the max minus the min. If I put that as a clustered column in here, there's all three. So this yellow plus this blue equals this one. So now I'm going to get rid of the max and I'm actually going to stack these. So here. What I have actually is this dark blue. This is the variance that I want to show. So that's actually the amount that is going to be the bar that I need. Now, I need to tweak this a little bit to start getting our way towards it. So let's go ahead and open the Format Painter. First set of uh, design methodologies comes into making sure that for the minimum wage, I'm actually going to turn the color to white, and I'm going to turn the transparency to 100%. So that gets rid of that bar. Now, again, the reason I turned off the tooltips is because of this. If we hover, we still get that smaller amount, which does kind of confuse people if they don't know where to hover. So personally, I'd recommend turning off tooltips for this. Now, if you take a look at the data label right here, it's already set to the outside of it. So the data labels in this section for the min wage, if we set that to inside end rather than auto, it basically becomes the left label that we want. So working towards it, getting there. However, though, if I go to uh, back to data labels and I go to the variance, 
I don't have an option for outside. I can do end, I can do center, I can do base, but no other way for me to place it on the outside. However, the trick comes in here. So turn this off, go to total labels, turn that on, that now becomes the right side of this. So the total label is the max amount because it's the total of the column. So now both of those together are essentially perfectly framing this as the min and max label that I would want for a range. Now it does also color it a darker color or a lighter gray color. So I'll make sure those match between the two, but it starts to tie this together and it perfectly wraps those two values together. And also why I can turn the tooltips off because this automatically comes in with those two labels that I need. Now, coming back to the range bar for a few of the things, I want to talk about the axis and I also want to talk about the ribbons. So coming back to the demo here, when you go to this, I am going to open up the ribbon section, turn that on, and I don't want it to be very apparent. So I'll make sure for the min wage. Again, transparency is completely turned off with this one, so it doesn't cover the grid lines for the min wage bar that's hidden. For the variance, maybe make it like 80%. There we go. So just a subtle little variance if you want to have that in there for the, the ribbons in between. And hover. Oh yeah, because the tooltip won't actually show the rest of it. But digressions aside, the last thing that I'll mention on here is I don't like all this white space over here from the $10 and less. I want to fill this in. Notice here how it starts a little bit to the left of that and it ends to the, a little bit to the right. So it perfectly encompasses the range and fits it into there. So it auto scales to that. So what I did is I created two more measures, the x-axis min. So this here, that's finding the min x of this. And I found that if I don't have this, it will actually cut off the data label. So I did it to 75% to make just enough room, in this case, to show the data label over here. So I'll show you without this. If I just do the min, the, I'll close that, data label cuts off. So that's why I made sure to, move it a little bit over just to make room for this. And maybe even if I do 80, let's see. Yeah, okay, probably 80% even works as well. So just enough room for said label. And if your number is bigger, you might wanna just ensure that this is gonna be big enough to fit however wide your number is gonna be. And then uh, the other one here is the max. So same thing, the x-axis max. I found that only 105% uh, over the size of it. So just 5% uh, extra room makes that label show. So if I go to start here, select the visual, go to the x-axis and the min becomes my axis min, my max becomes my axis max. And there we are. We've now fit the item into here. So not too many steps to get the result that we need using native visuals. The only couple of extra measures that I really needed is the max and min but not a lot of measures to write for this one. So I'd say this one is mostly out of the box solution with a little bit of tweaking to get the range that you wanted to. And with the label showing, I don't think a tooltip is needed to show you any other data because that's the information presented on the screen. Granted, you wouldn't be able to then see anything in your tooltips if you had extras, but this is achieving the effect of a range bar that you'd wanna see focusing on the variances itself. Now, the couple of downsides I'll just mention is because it's a stacked column, we cannot use error bars and also there's no gradients to be able to, to do in the bars because those are fixed to a particular color when you assign it here. So a couple of limitations just due to the type of visual, but otherwise I think this is a really good solution that does allow you to get a nice perspective to build into your reports and to use a range visual if you need to using the native visual functionality. Now if you have any comments or suggestions, as always feel free to drop those down below. Check out some of my videos here in the upper left. And as always, liking, commenting, and subscribing does help the channel continue to grow organically. And with that being said, I will see you in my next video.